This week on Three Wide No Cover, Maxi steps up his tipping game. Uh, my tip is if you're going to try and do jokes on TV, rehearse them a couple times. <laughs> we preview a massive card of racing at Mooney Valley with the Cox Plate. Will Animo get the job done this year after going down in controversial fashion in 2021? State of rest just in front of Animo. State of rest holding on. State of rest. Will Chad Schofield get a sweet ride on Sweet Ride to be first past the post in the Red Anchor? And Sweet Ride causes an upset in the San Domenico. And Maxi and I try to recover from a wardrobe malfunction. Uh, I hate to break it to you, it works you inside out. So start your engines, it's time for another episode of Three Wide No Cover, Cover, Cover. Hello and welcome to everybody watching Three Wide No Cover. Guess what? It is Cox Plate Weekend. It is my favourite race day of the year. I cannot wait to see who comes out on top in the greatest wait for age race here in Australia. I am so excited. Max Price, Nick Lazarus Ashman, Simon Marshall. Are you all as enthusiastic as me? Oh. Wow. Okay, that's a no. That's a fair yeah. no. That yeah. was the blunder. Really good. Really good. Uh, the Thanks, next guys. two. The next, uh, the, well, Friday night and then into Saturday's called for, uh, Cox Plate Day is absolutely outstanding. We're just bang smack in the middle of a spring carnival. Mm -hmm. Caulfield Cup last week. I mean, come on, man. What a uh, Saturday's uh, racing that was. And to Mickey D and Chris Waller, great results. But, hey, we do, I saw some Windex before. You know what we do, don't we? What do we do? We clean the windscreen. Look through it. To the Cox Plate. Not, not <laughs> through the review mirror. Oh. Nick, please help. Oh, God, this is a, the worst start to our show we've had oh. for a long time. <laughs> uh, leisure suit, Larry, not so leisure today, but uh, anyway, we've gone a bit more formal. 18 <laughs> races, uh, a lot of uncertainty in the air. What's the track going to do? Is the rain going to fall? If it does, then the inside chops out. If it doesn't, are we looking at a bit of a, yeah. a, a leader-dominated carnival, which we've had uh, in previous years gone by. So very difficult doing the form but still uh, an interesting Cox Plate weekend, as it is every year. Just on your wardrobe decisions, okay. I mean, last week you were in a blue and red leisure suit. Now you've come in a, in a Ralph Lauren polo shirt. What's, yep. what's uh, happened? Yeah, what's happening here? Well, um, uh, I've got a lot of gigs to do this weekend, okay. so I've had to dress formal, but oh. I have got the matching pink you shirt. Do, uh, and it matches pen. me too. matches you too. You look stunning, by the way, Grace. Thank well you. done. I love your outfit today. Let's get the matching. Max, how are you oh, doing this week? I'll bloody get this uh, train back on the tracks. <laughs> yeah. I'm going, going very well. Had a uh, great weekend, but not, no, not so much in Melbourne. I had a great weekend up in Sydney from Melbourne, if you know what I mean. <laughs> no. I tipped the Everest winner. <laughs> oh. Yes. Maxi. Yeah. But, yeah. But not on the show, so okay. we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Let's take a look at what the damage was last week because, to be honest, I found it really hard, um, Caulfield in particular, to find a winner. Uh, Mr Maestro, SD and I both found... I mean, you had Aegon, Nick, which is Dancing. pretty impressive, isn't it? Dancing. Zenzella on Sunday won as well. So oh, now, oh. though, we need to take a look what happened. still haven't given me my gig. Giga kick bet from a couple of weeks ago. Back. That's okay. We'll talk about that later. Let's take a look at what happened on the sports bet social media platforms. All right, Maxie, here you got a tip in the Everest for us. Well, I'm going against Nature Strip. I reckon Giga kick could shock Australia. It's 1100 metres. The last three starts has been faster than Nature Strip's last 1100 metre race, and it just needs to go 100 metres further, and Craig could shock the world. Giga kick! Giga kick down the outside wins the Everest. The unbeaten three year olds done it. Giga kick beat Private. Hey, well thank done, you very Maxie. much, everyone. Yeah, well, I just okay. yeah, that's it. I looked at Nature Strip's uh, 1100 metre races and, and Giga Kick was running a faster speed in its last three starts and I just thought it's 100 metres further and uh, yeah. Now he's justifying his yeah. magic. Yeah, Why not? I know, yeah. oh, yeah. Fantastic <laughs> there, Maxi. And you know what? Well done to Maxi. He's justifying his fantastic tip there last week. He's been humble in defeat all week, to be honest. And um, well, he's. Very humble in victory, yeah. or has he? Hasn't really gone to his head at all. No, it's good no, to see that he's still okay with no, it. No, yeah, no, it hasn't. Uh, I'm a humble guy, and uh, it's just good to tip <laughs> winners for the social uh, media channels, and it's um, nice to maybe tip some winners on this show as well now. But yeah, 
I'm quite a humble guy. Yeah, you are. Uh, you know, um, all you've done is just tip a huge price winner, but thank you. you know, it won't go to your head at I all. I like it. Twenty to one. Well, well done. That well, is fantastic. We've got to get that hat on Grace's head. Yeah, we do. Way, yeah. We definitely yeah. do. Yep. Great effort, though, Max. <laughs> in all seriousness, finding Giga Kick <laughs> in the Everest. Let's see, though, if you can replicate it when we take a look at what is going to be some massive <laughs> racing at the Valley. Of course, it's the Cox Plate. Let's take a look at what we can uh, expect in terms of the track's conditions. And we're at this unique circuit, aren't we, Nick? Yeah, that's right. Uh, look, as we know, if the track stays good, the key is, as we said off the top of the show, is where does this track get to in terms of conditions? It's if it's in that sort of soft range and we're still forecasting it'll be somewhat leaderish from that, uh, those sprint races, 1,200 metres or less. It does even out a little bit more as you get over the, the longer distances. And the main thing I want to drive home here, you can see there's the stats on your screen there. Really good ROI for those horses on speed forward and midfield. Let's be enough. frank, if you haven't jumped and led and been on the paint yep. or one off, you haven't won a Mooney Valley. No, nah, it's been like that this season big time. A little bit more even, I know the leaders there, the ROI is pretty good, but you can see there is something there for the midfield horses. It really comes down to the state of the track and whether that rain gets into it. Yep. Now initially, if it does rain, you might still see a bit leaderish, but I reckon by race 18 or 17 or 18 there, uh, come Cox Plate day on the Saturday, that's when you might start to see things um, uh, even up. I'm really happy they're leaving the rail in the true position so that all participants, riders and trainers, in particular horses, can find the best going on Cox Plate day mm -hmm. after the racing uh, Manicato Stakes night. I'm wrapped with that. Yeah, I think it's the right call, no isn't moving. it? Yeah, so we'll know what we're playing on um, come race day, of course, and mm -hmm. when the first race is run and one, we'll know a pattern. But let's take a look now. We're going to preview the feature race itself. It is the WS Cox Plate over the 2040 at wait for age level. It's the Group 1 feature of the Australian racing calendar. And in terms of the market, well, Animo has won three Group 1s this preparation. So you can understand why he is the $2.40 favourite ahead of Zaki at 440. El Bodegan is the $7.50 third elect here. And you wanted to go Bodegan. I wanted you? to go Bodegan, but I didn't. <laughs> uh, and he's the import, he's the X Factor in the race. I'm thunderstruck, $15 into $11 in early betting. That price might have been too big early doors. And then Gold Trip uh, on the seven day backup. This is such an interesting race we've been are so excited about this contest for the entire spring racing carnival. So let's take a look at the most relevant replay, I suppose, and it is Animo winning the Might and Power Stakes. Last start, you've got Zaki on Thunderstruck, you've got Mr. Brightside, the finish is right on their tails there as well. Alligator Blood is the one that put, sort of fades late. This is the form race, isn't it? 100% it is. Uh, well, let Simo talk about the speed map in a moment's time, but you notice Zaki wanted to lay in a bit at the top of the straight with a horse underneath him. That might change on Saturday, drawn barrier one. Animo wanted to wobble around the bend, similar to what he did in the Cox Plate last year. So that's the little key, the chink in his armour if there is one. But he was dominant for mine on the line there, Simo. Um, those horses should have beaten him and he was too good for them. So they are going to face a, a monumental task for mine to beat him on Saturday. Uh, but... Cox Plate can uh, bring the best horses undone. I love the way Frage finishes like that when you're going into a grand final, into a Cox Plate. One thing I found out of that race was Animo wasn't at his best by losing two lengths on the bend and having on Thunderstruck race up who was ridden closer on the day and get past him and use him and flush him out on his right shoulder and look like he was going to go on to win the race. I thought Zaki was much better third up, mm -hmm. fighting on for third, but Animo did a lot more wrong to I'm Thunderstruck and Zaki, but he still put him away and he looked like he was stronger on the line. Yep. And then come to Mooney Valley, if we get the rain, go and have a look at his wet form. Yeah. He is elite so that's on a the wet thing. track. And also they couldn't beat Animo last start and now he's going to be peaking and improve fourth up for the Cox what, Plate. What about the pace of the race, though? We, not on Saturday, we'll let Simo talk about that in a moment's time, but in that race there, it yep. was very slow. Yeah. And it was the heat really came on from about the seven or 800 metre mark. Yep. So, you know, a different shape race on Saturday, does that bring about a different result as well? Potentially, but we know that Animo, like he's thrived in fast run, high pressure races like the Guineas, Guineas last year. Yeah. But I want to ask you, Max, because I'm thunderstruck, was I think $7.50 in that race last week yep. or two weeks ago, last start, um, and he was beaten I know. half a length. And, and now you're $15. Exactly. The, the value bet here has to be on Thunderstruck. I, mean, I think so. You look at that, he lost by half a head. I mean, I know Animo's getting fitter, but as you said, Cox Plate and mm -hmm. Mooney Valley can throw up some interesting results and... You can't dismiss, He's I'm right Thunderstruck. There. I'm so He's I'm right definitely... There. The reason that he went up the price was his barrier 10. 
yeah, around Mooney sticky. Valley. They wanted to ride him closer from an inside barrier Caulfield there in the Caulfield Stakes. Barrier 10 at Mooney Valley poses so many question marks for him. If he uses going out of the straight, will that take away his turn of foot at the end of 2,040 metres at Mooney Valley, which we'll touch on in a minute. So what do we think about this import? Uh, El Berdigan for Chris Waller now to be ridden by Damien Oliver. So uh, Northern Hemisphere three-year-old is a really good platform profile for a horse to come out over to Australia and be really successful. Is this the one? Is this the one to win a Cox Plate like we saw State of Rest win last year? Well, I think he's, he might end up being Johnny on the spot if Animo and Zaki don't turn up at their best, who are the, clearly the two standouts from the Australian contingent. This is the horse that could step up. He's the one that's going to be doing the rain dance over the next 24 yeah. hours. His wet form is elite in Europe. He's got form around Deauville legend. He ran third to him in his most recent start in the Great Voltages Stakes at Group 2 level. That's really good form race, and the race rated really well. He was beaten some margin. It was, yep. I think, about five or six lengths, but it's still very good form for a race like this. I, I think their main hope, SD, is to go forward from uh, that mid-draw with that 2,400-metre run under the belt and make it a truly run contest from the outset. So what we know about him is, is the Adelaide who won this race and also stayed at rest is that uh, Northern Hemisphere three-year-old, he gets 56 and a half kilos. His Group 3 and Group 1 win over the, around this trip on soft track, um, it looks like he just profiles so well. Mm -hmm. First up for Chris Waller, Connections brought him for this race. Damien Oliver's out of sorts a little bit. It'll be good for Ollie to win another Cox Plate and um, he needs a winner on a major day. Um, so... There's a lot of question marks about him from gate eight where he gets back into the field. Mm -hmm. He'll have to make a run down the side and, and test Animo at some stage. We'll talk some ta tactics and Simon says now, uh, I think I've got a stinger. <laughs> Jeez. And of course, he's getting up there for his... Watch out! SD, you don't throw to your own stinger. No, I don't. That was just brilliant. Here's more of me. Literally. It's a little bit weird, but you have a look at the stinger and it's just as weird. So, it's even weirder. So I want to talk tactics and the speed map. Let's have a look at the speed map here. So, Zaki from gate one fourth up, he's absolutely elite. We've got the Hollandale, Doom and up and also the McKinnon, fourth up. He's drawn the paint, Jamie Carr roll forward. Profondo, I think he'll go with him. Try and get into a nice rhythm and get around Mooney Valley. If he can do that, terrific. Alligator Blood's pulled up lame. He'll be vet checked going into this race on Saturday. Pressure on him drawn out deep to come across and use. That's the worry for Alligator Blood, the last 100 metres at the 2040 now. Um, Mr Brightside, he's the one Will he go forward or will he go back? Now, they want to, want to ride him quiet and use his turn of foot. So where can he fit in midfield when Animo's going to kick up with Law of Indences and try and be one out, one back? Then you've got Gold Trip, Maximal and Young Verta all just uh, travelling midfield. So Mr Brightside has to go right back with Mawanga, our uh, Bodegon, and also I'm Thunderstruck and make their runs at some stage. I've highlighted three horses, Al Bodegon, also Animo and Zaki. They're the key runners for me. Zaki will take it up and at some stage he'll try and pinch a break and run a strong 2,000 metre fourth up. Animo gets the run of the race. He's the box ticker rolling into it and at some stage Al Bodegon will try and pick them apart like Sir Dragon A did a couple of years ago and then have the last crack at them late. So it sets up to be a fantastic finish this year. Best ride wins it. And of course, a champion has to turn up to win a Cox Plate. And yeah. I think it's Animo for mine. What happens uh, if Alligator Blood comes out? Does does that soften the pace? Does a horse like El Bodigan, Bodigan <coughs> decide to actually go forward then? Because um, he lacks a turn of foot to beat him at two thousand. Possibly, yeah. but you watch those um, international horses that are used to ro uh, galloping in room. Yep. They'll ride him for a little bit of room and just get him into a nice rhythm at some stage. Yeah. I reckon down the side he's the horse to creep forward at the 700 yes. and mm. pick that. that uh, the race, that's the thing. What we know about the Cox Plate, regardless of uh, who's in it, it, there's going to be a lot of intent. Jockeys are going to be applying pressure at the beginning and then also down the side, as you say, SD, at around the 700 metre mark. Just one final question before we get to our tips. Animo, he's already a six-time Group 1 winner. If he wins the Cox Plate as a four-year-old entire spring four-year-old on Saturday, is he a modern-day champion or is he not there yet? No, he, if he wins if this he Cox wins, Plate, yeah. yes, I think he's the modern-day champion. Caulfield, Guineas, Cox Plate, you call those horses champions um, and you can only beat what's around. But yep. this is a serious way for Rage Horse. We have depth and Group 1 performers. Yep. 
Is there a blowout? Is there an absolute wipeout this year? Could it be Law of Indices? Could Indices be. who steps up in trip and gets a beautiful run where the blinkers come off. Maxi. I'm backing uh, Law of Indices for a place, actually. Ooh. But I am sticking with I'm Thunderstruck. I've stuck with him a couple of times, and it's just the, the value there. And I just, I'm expecting a bit of chaos in the race. And, uh, bit of Akadaka. Yes, bit of Akadaka. Thunder. So, I'm, I'm Animo. We're all Animo, yeah. Animo, yep. Zaki. I like Law of Indices, though, to run the top four for those who exotic players. Yeah, and I can't talk you out of I'm Thunderstruck at all, especially at the price. That is our preview for the Cox Plate. Stay with us. We'll be taking a look at some of the other feature races at the Valley on the other side of this quick break. <laughs> Made it here in one piece this week, so I don't need the rocker, but have a look at this uh, filly. She was very good, Pentai's Pride. I know this is Maui last Friday, so uh, showcase race if you like, because it was Maui Cup Day. She gets up on the inside and bolts away from him. Only a four-horse race. Best last 400 and 200 of the meeting on debut. Didn't win by a big margin. Just keep an eye out for her if she strikes a wet track again. You might get a price because her SP was high. I want to take you up to Wagga recently. Little Paddy Murphy, uh, son of Lindsay Murphy, the ex uh, course manager up there at Rose Hill. He's trained a horse to sit outside the lead, still doing a couple of things wrong, wrong switching the tail, wants to get on one rein. Also produced some of the best late splits of the day. Smashed the class average by about three or four lengths. He might be a horse to keep an eye on going forward. Heavy eight track that day, plenty of rain around in Sydney. This is the best maiden win of the week for mine though. Pungo for Chris Waller. Uh, look, sat on speed, bolted away, only at its, at its, <coughs> excuse me, at its second start. Uh, 1,400 metres, about three quarters of a second inside the standard time. Great late splits and uh, look for him to uh, progress on to bigger and better things. Pungo. Plenty to take note of there, everybody. Hopefully you are listening and hopefully we provide plenty of winners. Thanks, Laz. There's three. You'd like to hope I can get one. Yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. I've been known to clean shit it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at the market for race three at the Valley, which is the Red Anchor Stakes. It's over 1,200 metres for the three-year-olds. Sweet ride, Annabelle Neesham. Uh, obviously, this horse comes down from Sydney, racing on those he heavy tracks, uh, was unable to gain a start at the Manicato Stakes. So at $3.80 has been well backed as our favourite. Here in the Red Anchor, ahead of Shalailed, Sajardin, Great Barrier Reef, all of these Sydney horses um, coming down might be able to perform and take out this race. Just want to make note of one horse, which might come up, no spoilers here in just a moment's time, but Mr Tickles, $61 into $26. I wonder who's to blame for that price going. <coughs> uh, we'll get to that in the not too distant future. <laughs> but firstly, let's take a look okay. at the Sweet Ride replay last start. So this horse, I mean, he was entered to run in the Manicato Stakes. Clearly, he's right there. This was in the Roman Console Stakes, his former round in secret. He's been racing really well. But SD, what do you think about the fact that he's had so many runs on heavy, heavy tracks in Sydney? Well, I, I, I take vain that she's such an honest horse and I take vain that she is in a great vein of form. Uh, she's tough, she's hard fit, she's proven that. Best of Bordeaux snuck up on the fence there. She just got tight for room at a crucial stage trying to get through. Um, what I like about her though, she beat a horse called Natuno, who I've got an opinion of prior to that. She ran two lengths behind in secret, who could be a star. Yeah. Who ran second to Jackano in the Golden Rose. And uh, we've seen that form being frank with Golden Mile coming out of that race. And then she ran second to Best of Bordeaux, who was just had the best run in the race and just got the beautiful run up on the slipstream on the paint there. I think she's very well placed here, 1,200 metres at Group 3 level. Sajardin, Shalayad, uh, Great Barrier Reef. The speed's all drawn out. So Shalayad will come across, Charlemagne will come across, Sweet Ride can come across a new Charlemagne. Shalayad also will kick up with Red Zeust and also Baldino. There's your speed. She sits on speed. Mooney Valley's going to suit her. She's hard fit. And that Sydney form is absolutely elite coming off those heavy tracks, uh, Grace. Mm. Just last Saturday, Durst and a very fine red and Renaissance woman yeah. cleaned us up yep. and they all came off heavy tracks in Sydney. Now as the mug representative to those watching, I, I do the form and I, I try my hardest to see what I can, you know, look for good form and bad form and just something, just I need to pick something but I, I looked at Mr Tickles and then we get emailed each other what we're tipping for the weekend. Uh, Nick, you've tipped Mr Tickles, it's had one run in a chuka in a maiden for 27 grand and how did, what are you seeing there? Yeah, what what am I missing? The race rated okay. The horse did, still did a few things wrong, was very strong through the line. You know, its sectionals late were good. And I, I thought, like, I appreciate what Simo's saying with Sweet Ride, there's a bit of depth in those Sydney ranks, but 
Outside of that, I just thought this horse was a good bet at around that $71, $67. Now he's into $26, so the price is somewhat gone. But when you're getting 16 bucks to place on horses like this, and you can only see maybe one or two main horses in the race that you want to be on, he's got to be an each way bet for mine. So 26 bucks is probably short enough. Now I think I marked him 19 or 21. Um, so he's probably still a bet if you're keen to have one. But um, yeah, that was my reasoning there, Maxie. Beautiful. Great Barrier Reef for me, everybody. Uh, Chris Waller, James McDonald, Barrier 8, I think it's a good draw. And this horse was very unlucky behind Giga Kick in the Dane Hill Stakes last start. Has been starting um, bigger prices. Now we've got $8 about him, but I just think he's the one on the up. We've seen all these horses sort of hit their peaks already. We haven't seen the best of this horse yet, this preparation. At least that's how I'm seeing it. Could be wrong. King's Consort for you? Yeah, it likes to sing out of the ground. It won a uh, decent race at Caulfield in April. And um, it's funny, I kind of bag in your twenty six dollar tip and yeah, I'm tipping a each way twenty dollar chance. So I just <laughs> didn't I didn't mind it. It's a confusing and tough race for me, this one. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at one of the other feature races on the card, which is the Crystal Mile, and a really good contest because we've seen so many of these come out of the Group One Turak Stakes last start, which was at Caulfield. Tuvalu, of course, won that race. He's our $3.10 favourite. Gentleman Roy at $4.20. Vizanari, he comes from a different form line. He's only second up here, but he won a listed race first up and he's um, a really progressive, exciting horse. And you've got Mai Oberon, who's another import um, having his first Australian start. So fascinating race, really condensed market there. Like, I think there's going to be a lot to play out in this space at the moment. So Tuvalu was the winner of the Turak Handicap. He's now a Group 1 winner, which actually makes him well suited now, Nick, at weight for age under the conditions of this race, as opposed to every other horse that he takes on the, here. The beauty of recording this right now is he's just come out. The scratching's literally just come Has through Tuvalu. Yep, so he's come out oh, of the uh, Crystal Mile. Gentleman Roy. So Gentleman Roy, who's the horse that's on speed there, uh, he's going to be the biggest beneficiary of Tuvalu coming out of the race. Yep. I thought Call Sign Mav, he had a excuses in that two-rack handicap. He got his tongue over the bit. He won the Sir Rupert Clark the start before that. He's the horse that doesn't go up in weight. Gentleman Roy comes up to weight for age. Yes, he's super tough and he's a big, robust boy and he should be able to handle that weight increase. But two, uh, uh, Call Sign Mav is the horse whose weight doesn't change That's at all. That's true. So I think he's the big improver out of that two-rack handicap. And the other one I didn't mind was Visionari. A real lot of upside to this horse. Absolutely smashed in betting. Started $1.50 after being Black Figures uh, first up at Flemington. Does pop up in weight, but he's carried weight before and produce good ratings. Yep. He looks like a well above average horse. This is an intriguing race. Tuvalu now comes out. He'll go for the Golden Mile. He'll be safe for that with uh, Lindsay Smith's team. So this, there was heaps of pressure up front, even with Tuvalu in the race. Uh, out of the race, there still is. I should say Buffalo River, who's been specced. Military expert who comes out of uh, beating Gentleman Roy in the uh, behind uh, Tuvalu in the two rack. And then we've got uh, obviously Holbein and then Visanari will also roll forward. So stacks of pressure early doors. So the horse I'm leaning to now, I was keen on Tuvalu, he scratched. The horse I'm leaning to now is the nine military expert. He beat home um, Gentleman Roy in the two rack. So weight for rage scale sort of uh, suits him, I think, here. Um, and what I like is he lands on speed, he's hard fit and he loves the juice out of the track. So if the rains come, he'll be fine, military expert. Really interesting with that mm. scratching of Tuvalu. I think, um, yeah, my Oberon's probably still the one that we just don't know how good well, this horse is. The query with him is is how fit he's going to be. I think market's going to be your best guide, Simo, isn't it? Um, he's soft in the market early doors, so he's an import now gelded um, here uh, for, and Johnny Allen rides in the saddle for Annab Annabelle Neesham. He's a listed winner, Group 3 winner in the UK, first up 1,600 metre, weight for age looks to suit him. His trials have been quite sharp without being flashy. I just like the placement first up, the intense there at Group 2 level to run him over a mile first up and let's see what we've got. So uh, wait till uh, race day to see if there's a push. Tune in to racing.com. I'll be there on behalf of Sportsbet and we'll know exactly what the market's doing if he's ready to rock and roll my Oberon. Yeah, because of that pace in the race that Simo identified, even with Tuvalu coming out, it's yeah. going to be a true test. Definitely. You're going to need to be a fit horse. I want to see a little market push for him. I thought Banker's Choice um, had his chance here now because he's been getting so far back in big feature races, for example, the Turak Handicap, but he's just got too much to do. Now he finds himself in, you know, an eight-horse field. He's not going to be too far back, and at $7.50 now, he might be one that can just be the sweeper if you can swoop on the day. What did you think, Matt? Well, I've just put a big line through Tuvalu, yep. unfortunately, but I had uh, Visionari. I like that horse each way, so mm. that was my backup bet, um, but a shame Tuvalu's... Uh, Good win first up. Jamie Carr rode the horse on speed. 
big weight, uh, was able to last and show a little bit of class. Another step up in grade uh, here, Visionari, but gets a sweet run just in behind him. Maxie, you'll get a run for your money. Yeah, fascinating. Really interesting race. All right, well, it's time for, got a sting now. Time for this. Can you say this? <laughs> oh. Look at just that. Oh, I've got my own sting. I threw it to myself. Did you just throw to your own sting? Yeah, who does that? Come on, Rick. So this is where <laughs> I asked the uh, this is where I asked the panel to slip something in, a phrase, a, a saying into their coverage throughout the weekend. And SD, uh, last two weeks ago I asked you to say sesquipedillion. How'd you go? It's not hard. Bow bow. No good. Last week I asked you to do a fact about uh, more Sinram in northeast India that has, uh, it's the wettest place on earth. Uh, asked me to do a what? Yeah, what, what did you ask him to do? Fact. Okay. Say fact. Yep. That's fine. Uh, we might have to beep <laughs> something there, we'll do we? Fact. Um, <laughs> sorry, a fact. Uh, and that place has 11,872 mils of rain each year for those trivia fans. Super How'd you go then? All right, so two it's strikes. Simon. Gosh. How bad's this? That's so, so bad. We have oh, one more dead. week, three strikes, you're out. I realise there, there isn't the, there's nothing on the line, so I've got a simple one for you. Wax lyrical. It means talk in a highly enthusiastic and infusive way. Uh, so I want you to say, I could wax lyrical about this horse all day. Now, wax, interesting that I've just said. It's a simple one with dire consequences. If you don't say it, we're filming you getting your legs waxed next week. That's what's on the line. Show oh, us those pins. There's a bit of work there too. Oh, oh no, you didn't. You I did. Mean, come on, man. Oh, you Look didn't. at the shoes too. You can't be waxing these. Uh, oh, wow. You can't be waxing, waxing Look these pins. It's a simple equation, that. SD, simple equation. You, <laughs> the Bolangelo State Forest, that is. You say wax lyrical, we're all sweet. You don't, all the hair's coming off those this. legs. No Nad's hair removal, the wax. The wax. <laughs> 40-year-old virgin, Steve Corral, rip. Wow, this has just okay. got spicy. This I'm loving good. it. That's excellent. I really hope you forget to say wax lyrical SD. <laughs> Time for another break on Three Wide No Cover, but don't go anywhere. There is plenty more on the other side. Oh, I really want to do so. The next feature race to preview is the Mooney Valley Vars for the three-year-olds getting out to the same distance as the Cox Plate, but we've got quite a few horses coming through either the Caulfield Guineas or the Start Stakes, which we'll take a look at in just a moment's time. Berkeley Square, well, he was all the rage in the Caulfield Guineas. He's good there, not beaten too far. $2.40 out and trip now looks ideal. Virtuous Circle at $5.50s. Pericles. Pericles. Pericles, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I gave it a go. Six dollars. Jenny Jerome interests me at nine dollars fifty, and then you've got Fahita Sand and lots of other horses yeah. that might be able to improve now they're stepping up in trip. That's what comes into play here. So if we take a look at the Stutt Stakes last start over the 1600 metres, this is one race where we see lots of horses come out of it at the valley over the 1600 metres. We've got um, Fajita Sand comes out of this second. Virtuous Circle was third. Even let's roll the dice back in behind as well. But what's relevant here is that this is at the valley and these horses, especially Virtuous Circle Max, missed the guineas deliberately yes. for this race. Yes, exactly. And uh, Esther, you said a little while ago that Mooney Valley's form and it can be a bit confusing with other tracks. And if you win here, if you're winning at Mooney Valley, mm -hmm. great turn of foot. Um, we've got the Kiwi jockey, James McDonald, Kiwi horse. So choice bro, I reckon it, I reckon it can win. Yeah, and the fact is that, it, that I think that because they missed the guineas and 2,000 metres derby has been the goal, it's sort of the set play for Virtuous Circle in a way. You've got a horse like Fajita San who I'm kicking up for again. You were right, by the way, last start in the Caulfield Guineas. They went way back just as a tick over run yeah. to get out and trip. So yeah. you never know. But then uh, Berkeley Square. So now he gets out to the 2,000 metres. Everyone thought he was the winner of the Caulfield Guineas. So has he had his grand final day, do we think? <laughs> Oh, good lordy me, what you hadn't seen here was he missed the kick. He blew the kick. <laughs> you can't do that in the Caulfield Guineas. But then watch him late. Come on, big boy. Show me you're going to win when you get to 2040 at Mooney Valley next start, drawn seven, where you can just sit back midfield, sit two, three deep, just float along. Brr, brr. Craig Williams will be singing a little song to him till he gets down to the side there and then he'll just go, let's go. He'll round him up and he'll go whoosh. His second favourite at $4.40 for a derby now. He's screaming out for this distance. Yeah. That this was is magnificent. He's 0.6 of a length out of a Caulfield Guineas charging home. And look what he meets here. 
I get your point in terms of uh, virtual circle. Now, the, this horse, Pericles, from uh, Sydney, mm. big boy, second start, 500k race on a heavy 10. He's going to get around Mooney Valley for the first time. I want to see it, but he can roll forward. Vegeta Sand from gate five will roll forward. Dashing, they rode that horse forward. It didn't work out last start, but he can go forward again. Got to be savvy, hereditary, and also Sir Bailey will all... Pressure to sit on speed and try and get a better run and be close enough for when they sprint at the 650 down the side. Um, really interesting in this race that I think there'll be a race within a race from the 650 where they'll all bunch up and just get their room and try and gallop out strong. You need to be winning this race if you're going to win a derby. And I think Barclay Square... He's the horse for me. He's one of the better bets on the program. That is the definition of wax lyrical, can I also just yeah. say. Uh -huh. There's a lot of enthusiasm There's wax in on. SD. There was no wax off there. Yeah. I might just call it max lyrical on the day. Uh, well, actually, that would not be allowed. you get your legs allowed. waxed if you do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> As you can see... Or his legs um, maxed. Yes. Barclay Square, Ew. we're all... Oh, Nick, you're with the Sydney side. No surprise there. Oh, please. Vegeta said... I'm sticking up for him again. So, uh, for the last oh. time, I just can't <laughs> not be with him. <laughs> yep. So we'll see how we go in go. the Mooney Valley Vars. Oh, well, this is my favourite part of the show. <laughs> the uh, the challenge bet, the dare bet. Uh, two weeks ago in the Turak Handicap, it was I Wish I Win versus Tuvalu. SD, you had I Wish I Win on top and I had Tuvalu on top. And the winner uh, had their wish granted and got to go surfing. And this is how we went. We headed out to one of the coolest places in Melbourne. After having some kind of car dance with a strange Uber driver, I arrived. The winner of last week's dare bet was Tuvalu versus I Wish I Win. The country Tuvalu in the Pacific has one of the smallest coastlines in the world, and so does urban surf, so clearly the link was there. I tipped Tuvalu, and while SD had tipped Tuvalu as his each way bet, his main bet was I Wish I Win, who left its run too late. Tuvalu takes the lead, 50 to go, Tuvalu draws clear and won the Turak. The winner surfed while the other one watched on and had to hold a towel like a supportive helicopter parent. SD lobbed in this tie-dye hoodie which made him look like he was mates with Mick Fanning. I was also getting into the spirit of things and threw out a few shuckers. Is that what people do? The staff selected my board and gave me a guarantee. He said, uh, guaranteed to get up on this board. I put the wetsuit on with Grace. Not, uh, not Grace Ramage, um, as in with Grace the, the noun. The lifeguard informed me of some not ideal news. I hate the grey TV, we went to inside out. I changed it and as I was about to go in, SD and the surf guards noticed something. Yeah, don't tell him, but it's on backwards. It didn't matter, because I tipped a 10 to 1 chance and with a suit on back to front, this was my moment. Sucked, like really sucked. But at least I had SD back on shore to support me. He would have to have water in every one of his face holes. Luckily, I've been to the gym twice this year, so I could stay out there for half the session before pulling the pin. Ah, Tuvalu, huh? I'll be showing you now to one, but Tuvalu, how's going there? But things look a bit cold. <laughs> Thanks again, SD. What a but of course Simo couldn't help himself. We'd pay for a full hour, so he took my board and he was off. Maybe he was mates with Mick Fanning because he shredded, dropped in and almost got in the green room. You just drop in and just smack the lip, whoop, drop down, snap, and then after that, you just drop in, you just ride the barrel and get pitted, so pitted. While SD dropped in and got pitted, so pitted, whatever that means, one of the managers there said I actually wasn't too bad. Yeah, Max is one of the worst surfers I've ever seen. Unreal setup, urban surf, what a place, can't wait for the next bet. Oh, that's very good, guys. Well done. <laughs> that was outstanding. Oh, no, no, that was a good day. Urban Surf, eh? Oh, Urban wow. Surf is a real good place. We absolutely loved it. Thank you, um, Urban Surf. Thank but you for saying face holes again. Yes. We needed that. Uh, uh, but as you said earlier, we've got a windscreen. We've cleared the screen. We've got another week, another yeah. dare. Okay. And I struggled this week with our tips, but I looked at some of the videos we sent on our social channels, and this is what you sent for the Cox Plate. Who's going to win the Cox Plate this year? Animo, Animo, Animo. Animo, 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 Animo can win the Cox Plate this year. Right, so, <laughs> great singing. And I want to test those pipes a bit more oh, with no. some karaoke. Oh, no. <coughs> so, oh, that's outstanding. I'm wow. thunderstruck. Thunderstruck by ACDC. 
And Saturday by Elton John. Whoever yes. loses has to sing the other one's tip in a karaoke night. So stay tuned for next week. We'll yeah. film it all. Wow. And, uh, you'll be hearing someone singing. This we love it. is outstanding. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Well done, you two at Urban Surf and cannot wait for karaoke next time. We'll take another quick break on 3 Wide No Cover. We hope you're enjoying it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what? This is what up, punters. <laughs> oh Last God. week, the Everest. Give him the gold. I'm tray. stinging because you know I just really thought uh, Private Eye be good each way. We thought um, Nature Strip was just the horse to beat. But how can we not mention, apart from Maxie on his socials, 27-year-old trainer Clayton Douglas going over there with undefeated Giga Kick, Craig Williams taking off. Caulfield Cup Day rides to go and ride Giga Kick in an Everest, and then this goes and happens. For winners to have. Clayton, Douglas, oh. 27 is... yeah. years of age, Giga Kick gets out with 100 to go. He needs 800,000 in his back pocket because he lives and breathes life with this <laughs> horse, wow. and he hits the front. Craig Williams steers him to the lead, and bang. He gets how, up and wins the Everest. How good is that vision? spring in the step there. Yeah. Good vertical leap. Yeah, great vertical Wasn't leap. Wasn't a great vision? That's it is. Because, and you're right. Life changing. You're right. I don't, uh, well, I mean, we can only say a huge congratulations to Clayton. This will change his training career. He's on the biggest stage. Not only has he collected, you know, a significant, significant amount of money to go and help him with his training operation, but it is life changing what this has done. Max was the only one who found it. But you're right, I'm stinging as well that we didn't find Giga Kick. Didn't have something on him. C. Stinging. Williams stinging. going north. Great point. Yeah, yeah. Let's well done, Clayto. Let's take a look at the market for the Mooney Valley Gold Cup because we know that this is one of the final opportunities for horses to win their way into the Melbourne Cup. Now, Francesco Gardi would be looking for that golden ticket and he's our $4 favourite. Head of Persan, Desert Icon, Luna Flair. Well, she won the Bart Cummings, so she's already in the Melbourne Cup as a result of that victory. Grand Promenade's now getting fitter. Maybe he goes forward. Maybe he inserts some tempo into the race. Got some others on that second page there as well. Let's firstly look at the Herbert Power last start, where Persan, Grand Prom, and Desert Icon were in this race. The winner, Saracen Knight. Now, Desert Icon doesn't win this, but I like Desert Icon on Saturday for two reasons: his Mooney Valley form, because he is an outstanding Mooney Valley horse. He just scoots around the bend, kicks clear. And also he's drawn the inside barrier, which, yes, if it rains, it might be inferior, but that's just how he loves to be on speed, behind the speed, um, rails around the valley like a greyhound. I just think he's a, a really good bet in this race. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not going to knock you, particularly if the rain doesn't come for him because that inside gate will be a, a massive advantage. I thought Persan was pretty good there. He looks like he's just about ready to peak. This yeah. is a million-dollar race on Saturday, so my gauge on Persan is that he's probably not going to be winning a Melbourne Cup with all due respect to uh, to Connections, but this is a very winnable year. race for him on yep. Saturday. And then if you win this, you cop the million or the lion's share of a million bucks and you can go into the Melbourne Cup as the last start winner. Don't forget, two years ago, he was the first Aussie home, running fifth, mm -hmm. Simo. Ran super in the mm. Melbourne Cup. Good speed in this race. Serpentine Sacramento will set this up. Desert Icon will roll forward. Nerve, not verve. Pressure. Good building. Proper staying race. This Hopefully, one. Hopefully, yeah. Which I love about it. Luna Fleur uh, won the Harry White two years ago, won this race. Wins the Park Cummings this year. Yes. Here's Luna Fleur getting through. Uh, beautiful ride, Mickey D. Great timing. So won the Harry White, then the Mooney Valley Cup. Wins the Park Cummings this year and now goes into a Mooney Valley Cup again on the way to a guaranteed Melbourne Cup run, but have a look at Francesca. Look at him. Goodness gracious me. <laughs> Was he something beaten on the day? At the 300 metre mark, he got held up, held up, held up, and then zoomed home that last 400 sectionals, please. Huge. Uh, relative to the class, given the pace of the race, on the day it didn't rank in the top ten, but he was very, very yeah. good. And I had, uh, I was looking, I had Luna Flair down, and then I watched that uh, replay again. Now, watch, roll the tape. Like, not only did um, Francisco Gardi have trouble. See, look at the yeah, back at the there. Back. At the back there, gets knuckled, almost trips, yeah. and then comes into the straight, yeah. gets caught up, can't find a gap, can't find a gap, storms home, should have won. And I changed my tip to um, Francesco Gardi now. So Fair. yeah, just to point out, he's not in the Melbourne Cup anymore as well, Francesco. So um, 
Right, so oh, here we go. Yeah. From gate two, J-Mac goes on. He sits off this uh, really hot speed and you see he's a uh, turn of foot. That's dangerous. Yeah. Sydney horses off those wet tracks come and you see that type of stuff. Yeah. If, if he has no bad luck in this race, yep. I think he wins. And as Nick's just pointed out, this is a grand final race in itself, isn't it? I think so. I think yep. this is obviously a real target for him. They're, yep. they're giving up the Melbourne Cup dream. I've found too here a bit of a price though, guys. I hate myself for saying it, Serpentine. I know he's struggling to get out of his own way, but he's running some pretty high rating races. Drops right down to the 55 kilograms, and I've got a love affair with San Huberto. You I'm do give have a, a love affair with San Huberto. It's the first time he's been third up in a race here in Australia, so I reckon he's going to run a peg figure. Okay. SD, I've got a, um, I've got a just question to ask as a ex-champion jockey. This is the race before uh, the Cox Plate. Uh, when you go out there and you listen to the trainer instructions and you're talking to the connections, how much are you listening to race eight, but in having race nine in the back of your head. What's going through your mind? Quite simple, Maxie. Jockeys never listen to trainers anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's why we're employed. Simple answer. Yeah, we're employed to ride horses. Bang. Trainers are trained to try, uh, employed to train them. There's going to be some feedback on yeah, that. Yeah, there'll be some feedback yeah. on that for sure. So who are we all tipping in the Mooney Valley Gold Cup here? Yeah, Francesco. Francesco, Francesco. I'm with you, Hesty. I'm Serpentine San Roberto, but I thought Persan was the horse to beat the other ones in the market. I am with uh, Desert Icon for the reasons I have already outlined. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to take okay. another Throw break. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back with Around the Country on the other side. In fact, we're not going to a break. Oh. It's right here. Yeah. Let's do it now. Yeah. Let's do it now. Throw to yourself again. Do it. Do it. Do it. it. So I'll go first. Here we go. Navy Seal each way there in Sydney. First up, Chris Waller. Rush away, lad. Terrific winning last start. Lightweight. An Aussie Nugget each way too. Ooh, up there Sim, I'm with you with the Aussie Nugget. I found one in the West, Amelia's Jewel. She's very smart, unbeaten, race seven. And just a couple of anchors there into uh, Golden Mile. He's the best up in Sydney. I think he'll be winning again. And sharp and smart. Uh, I liked his win last time out. And I think he'll be winning the spring champion, the feature in Sydney. The race four, the Phillies race, the Crockett Stakes at the Valley on Saturday. There's a horse called Over Shady, who was very good last mm. start. $23, that's good enough for me. And then Bermudez and Blistering on Sale Cup Day on Sunday. So that's why we're playing around the country. Make sure you take a photo of that. Now it's time for a break. Stay with us. Or is it? <laughs> <laughs> The final race for us to preview is the last on the card and it's the Tezio Stakes for the Mayors. Roots coming down from Sydney is our $3.20 favourite <laughs> and McGreevil and also Cerulio Miss that there's not much between those two, $4.60 and $4.80. My whisper is one that I'm interested in, but as always, this is a very open Mayors race. Let's take a look at the favourite and what she was able to do last start. Her name is Roots and she was a winner at Canterbury. Yeah, I'm with old mate here, Grace. She, uh, she was very good. Her last two gallops in Sydney have been terrific. What she possesses is a really good turn of foot. She comes out of two very fast run races and she's able to overcome trouble from the 300. Look at her idle down here and come out of those races very quickly. Cerulio Miss was really good at this day. She's just an outstanding mare. She runs good time when she's right. I think she can only improve looking at her sectionals late, I think she'll just come off this and improve a bit. Uh, I know it was a bit of a blanket finish, but for mine, she's one of the horses that they've got to beat this upcoming race. Yeah, she's definitely right there. She's a classy mare. We've seen her do this before. So, who is everyone with? Cerulio Miss in Skyhorse each way. Bar plates off for the first time, Ooh. so uh, look for her to improve. And if the rain comes, out wide on uh, the last race of the day at Mooney Valley, will be a place to be. Barclay Square into Animo into Roots for me. Craig Ooh. Williams. Craig Williams, Ooh. barrier three for Chris Waller. He's three-year-old Phillies this time of the year. That Sydney form, drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> wow. Drops five yep. and a half kilos. She does for this. <laughs> I know she's going up in grade, but there's not much between these mares and she's on the way up. Max? I like Cerulo Miss. I think Roots had a couple of wins in not a, you know not, not flash yeah, races. She's on the up, maybe. Yes, but she I has agree. To get there. Yeah. Yep. So. And then I'm with my whisper, who has been there. Last preparation mm. got out to 2,000 metres, third mm. in uh, Group One South Australian Oaks. I think she now gets her chance to be right in the finish, out to 1,600 metres. That's the mayor's race, the final race of the Cox Plate Carnival. Now let's check whether Nick is cashed up.
Kept it pretty narrow this week, Grace. There was too many on the page last week. Got a bit confusing. Mr. Tickles, we touched on this horse a bit earlier on, but the other one I like is race four, number 17, running by. So I'm just sticking with things that are double figures to try and get you a bit of value. I thought the uh, first up performance or debut performance from running by was particularly good. It'll train on stable stats with horses. Second up goes through the roof. Hate to use the term from another segment. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, So for mine, good each way gamble there. Are four. we cashed up with the cash man at the moment? Well, we had Aegon last week yeah, and literary true. magnet at yep. 26 bucks the week before That'll so do it. even though the strike rate of winners isn't real high the prices are coming yep. in yeah like it's with his answers he there is. Too. It was just, like, just uh, a couple of huge price winners yeah just doing what i can please <laughs> you want to get around it? it's time for our final break here on three wide no cover <laughs> we'll wrap up after this Let's take a look at how we fared in last week's Quaddy and we nailed the Caulfield Cup because we went really wide and we failed Ooh. everything else. So that's a really good team. Asfura was my best bet, but that's it's cool. like my report card at school. Yep, let's take a look at what we're going to do this week because we're going to nail it. And there we have the Quaddy numbers, so make sure you take your phone out and take a photo and put it on if you're game and willing. Good luck, team, with our Cox Plate Day Quaddy. Now, don't mind us. I mean, we've just come and raided Max's wardrobe, but um, yes, look at know, everyone. <laughs> looking, yeah, well, looking those, really uh, sharp, guys. Thank you very much, Shania Twain. <laughs> a little less conversation, a little more action, Elvis. A little more action, Shania Twain. Yeah. That don't impress it, me, mate. It doesn't impress me. It doesn't impress me. Impress me. Good. And uh, S Diddy. Yes. S Diddy. Like, S -Diddy. like a vandal. Okay. Ice. Ice. Come back to me. <laughs> Um, so we love a yeah, we love a pending bet on the show. So something we can look at futures market. And if Elvis, uh, could you please give us uh, a pending bet? Obviously, as an Elvis in person. Well, I certainly can. There, uh, oh my it. goodness! Uh, Golden Eagle next weekend, uh, hinged uh, around the eight dollar mark. He's done it. Champion Sprint Private Eye. He'll be going out, I hope. <laughs> and uh, Pericles, if he wins on Saturday, he'll be your gold uh, derby favourite. Have uh, you done uh, this before? No, I haven't, little lady. <laughs> I regret asking that. So, sorry, sorry to everyone Elvis. watching. Give us a little bit of go. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> you don't right. want to hear that. Let's go back to normal. Let's normal go back as to if normal. there's such a thing. Uh, our mate. bet with mates multi is uh, something that I mm -hmm. feel like it's coming. It's coming soon. So, what have we got here? Uh, SD, you with Animo as yep. our lock. He's a lock in Animo. Yep. Uh, I went Visionary to run a place. <laughs> you, you can't see to, out of those glasses, can like you? <laughs> you I'm with the Desert Icon to place in the Mooney Valley Gold Cup and you're with Virtuous Circle. To place. To so place. let's get one. Let's jag okay. one. Okay. I think it's this week, guys. I'm so excited about the Cox Plate. Um, we might even wear our props on race day. You never know. Do so you could look really good with your suit and tie oh, and, your, yeah. and your Cox Plate get up. Absolutely, yeah. That's, be, the, that's the money right there. There'll be a few people out the valley with these sunnies on anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. Absolutely. <laughs> They're, they're impress they're you much later. But in all honesty, it's going to be a great day's racing, isn't it? And Esther, you'll be there for onracing.com, of yep. course. Yep, looking forward to it. Yep. So uh, 10 of the best, that is for sure. And it'll be a massive build-up. The crowds have been enormous too. Melbourne Racing Club, well done to all the team out there. It was a fantastic crowd. I and can't wait to do some karaoke with you as well. Oh. Yeah. SD, that'd be fun. Sing. S Diddy. So, wait, Maybe just reminding what's songs? the bet there again? So, you're on? Uh, I am on uh, I'm Thunderstruck oh, yeah. and Animo. Anima. Jeez, oh, so you're, you're in the hot seat there. It looks like you're going to be singing on Saturday. Yes, yeah, and with Elton John. Maybe the glass. I need those glasses back. Maybe a bit of Elvis, right? huh? In fact, you probably Heartbreak need it Hotel. all back, yeah, I mean, you can't be karaoke without Shania Twain. I didn't buy any of that. That was just in my... That's just at home. <laughs> Well, it's been a lot of fun, everyone. Yeah. Enjoy Cox Plate Day. We hope that we've provided you with some winners. Don't forget to gamble responsibly and we'll catch you next time on 3 Wide No Cover. You know the score. Stay in control. Gamble responsibly.